Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of uh, the Beyond the Tape News, uh, where we kind of discuss each month's goings and comings and everything else happening in the industry. Uh, as usual, this episode is brought to you by Canyon Bicycles, Two Up Bike Co, Huck the World, NS Dynamics, uh, Fist Handwear, we've got uh, Dirt Surfer and a whole bunch of other crew as well. So thank you to everyone for our support. Um, before I drill on too much, let's jump into the news. Uh, for this episode, the first piece of news we're going to uh, start with is a big one in Australia. Um, Solar Sport, the importers of Netty, uh, Raceface and Fox and a few other brands have gone up for sale. Um, I've known about this for a couple of months uh, through some rumors in the rumor mill. Um, we are going to see them getting taken over by another brand um, or another company or another purchaser. This is leading me to think that we might end up with a Fox Australia type uh, situation where there's not like an importer or something like that, but Fox itself will be hosting and holding its own service center and product distribution and etc. cetera. Um, a uh, big reason for this, I'm guessing, is the fact that Solar may or may not know how bad they are at maintaining product availability, um, product serviceability, and dealing with warranty issues. Anyone that's worked in a shop or anything knows how bad this can be. Um, they don't really have a huge presence here in, in Australia as an aftermarket option. They're mainly on OEM, and a lot of aftermarket support like NS Dynamics or Cyclinic are the go-to because they are so much better at their jobs. Um, I'm not having a stab at Solar. I'm sure they've heard this before from numerous angry mechanics, but it is a thing that's happening. Um, so can't wait to see what happens there and see Fox perhaps have a better representation in the country. In other news, we saw Pinkbike uh, started off their field test with the Canyon $1,200 Stoic. Um, they said it's all that they need to have fun. They really love that bike. Um, I was actually chatting with Aaron Peltari the other day and he's frothing over it too. He's got a full pike access build up on that thing and loving it. Um, have to adjust your uh, riding ability a bit, but they're, they're loving it. Um, yeah, if you put, grab that bike, put a dropper post on it, maybe expand the gearing a little bit, it's gonna be a rad little bike. On other bikes, uh, we have seen that pole released and updated a new stamina, um, which is cool. Uh, they've got a new gold color option. Um, I believe that's gonna be called the gold member, uh, pole gold member. Um, we all know that you're, if you want a stiffer frame, you go with the blue, because blue always increases your pole stiffness. Um, the little blue pills are good for that as well. Honestly, not excited by this bike. It just looks like a train wreck. Um, of course, they do promote modern geometry and there are cool bikes, but I don't know. It's just what they were producing and what they are producing, you can now get in most modern day bikes off the shelf with good warranty support and actual delivery. Um, so there's been a lot of issues around poles. In the past, a um, bunch of people sending money over, you know, waiting on bikes. Their production line is terrible. They wait for ages. They don't actually end up with a product. And because they've sent over money to a bank account and then it gets transferred back to them, depending on the exchange rate, you can lose money. Um, I haven't heard of anyone gaining money from it. So um, yeah, they've released a bike. It is a thing, but you know, I'm not a huge fan of riding poles. Um, whether they're CNC or not, uh, yeah. There's so many jokes around that, that's not even funny. Uh, speaking of ugly bikes, um, Transformers and, uh, I don't even wanna know what they mated with to make this thing, but it's the Niner WFON9RDO. Rolls off the tongue. Uh, apparently, RDO stands for race day only. Um, that's the only time riders would want to be seen on this bike. Uh, there's more bars than Las Vegas on this thing. Um, I'm sure it rides amazing, but 
it looks like an extra small Trek Fuel EX on all sizes. So it's a pretty interesting little bike. Um, yeah, just a lot of weird things going on there. Just having a look at the reach numbers here as well. Even on a large, it's 487 mil reach. So I can't actually ride that bike. Uh, it's way too small for me. And there is no extra large available. So there's only three sizes, small, medium, and large, and it looks average. So won't be seeing many of them out on the trail. What do we got here? Uh, now, while he was riding a pole, an amateur downhill enduro racer uh, has been banned for four years for using and possessing 10 banned substances. Uh, so an amateur has been pumping himself full of steroids as testosterone, nandrolone, <coughs> uh, somatropin, ipromorolin, GHRP6, CG. Holy shit. Uh, human choreographer. It's harder to read than a technical document from a European bike brand, but um, he's been banned for four years. He did release a statement um, complaining that he didn't have the opportunity to be tested. It was done because someone has reported him. And he also mentioned that all of these uh, drugs were subscribed to him by a doctor. If that doctor is around, can you please reach out to me? I need some of that medication. I'm feeling very sick, got a bit of sore throat. Uh, some anabolic steroids will clear that right up. Um, in other news, Elliot Jackson and Tracy Hanna are picked to join the World Cup commentating team alongside the infamous Rob Warner. Uh, pretty excited about this. I'm not a huge fan of Claudio's remarks and, and what he brings to the Seen some heaps keen to see what Elliot brings to the table. I know he's good friends with Rob Warner and that crew, so it could be quite interesting. Um, and Tracy Hanna, if you've seen any of her after race reviews, you know she doesn't hold back. She's herself, and it's going to be pretty rad. Uh, it's good to see some mix up, especially with the women's con commentating and having more insight into that side of the sport. She's really going to understand what it's like to be in the women's racing, having to be a part of B practice, unless you're part of the elusive top five and you somehow get into a practice because the riders representative is in the top five no corruption in mountain biking um so yeah pretty keen to watch this season actually i think it's going to be really good we also saw in racing news um steel city media have launched their own team for 2021 um to support privateers and future talent. Um, this is a rad, rad little riding team. Um, every, all the marketing around it's cool. It's all very a kind of 80s European Union type stuff. Um, you've got riders such as the Zwa brothers, some of the best people I've ever had the chance to talk to. Uh, amazing riders and they're going to kill it with some proper backing behind them um we have ollie davis who is the next sam here with my eyes he is an absolute pinner if you haven't followed him on instagram do it uh he is an absolute pinner his videos are insane um they're going to be riding santa cruz bikes um not sure what kit they're on i guess it's up to them fox suspension max's tires trp cycling diety Reserve Wheels, Carbon, Hook It Products. Dave is helping them out there and Shredder Magazine. So pretty cool little setup there. Um, excited to see how this team goes because I believe it's going to be a bit of a feeder team to the bigger players. Um, excited, really excited. Cool, cool to see more of this stuff happening, um, especially with more of the pro as well, the guys that are pros and could be sponsored by a factory team are now doing things themselves because they can get better deals and they understand perhaps management isn't all that's needed. Uh, during the last few months, Pink Bike has done their Pond Beaver um, kind of write-ups. We've seen a few new products. We've seen a few things. This is because Sea Otter was cancelled. And around this time of year, we start to see more products and cool things at Sea Otter. Um, 
One thing they have put up that has really excited me, there's not much new product coming out due to the whole production issues, which I spoke about in the last thing. Um, but in the 90s, there was this company called Boone. They used to make the sickest looking alloy cranks on the market. This, they had this rad little twist, anodization, purple, pink, yellow. It was amazing. I wish they still had these. Um, but they've come out with this super fat, almost sci-fi-esque design. Um, it does look like something you might see in some sort of weird out there sci-fi sex show, but they look amazing. Um, solid alloy cranks, heaps of texture, CNC material, just really, really cool. Um, something different. Really keen to see something different out there. Um, in other team news, we've seen Katie Winton is to go on to Nuke Proof Bikes. Uh, she shared a bunch of stuff about her issues and trying to find a sponsor for 2021. Um, she was really struggling. She got dropped kind of around November, December last year in that hot zone where you don't want to get told you don't have a team for the next year. She did this YouTube series about her struggles to find the people to support her. Um, Hook It Podcast actually did a, no, sorry, Downtime Podcast, sorry, Chris, did a really cool interview with her about everything um, and how she ended up on Nuke Proof. Uh, really excited to see what she's doing. Um, she's part, called her team like the Moxie team. There's a whole thing around that. She's on Strand Products. She's gonna have a teammate. Um, she's racing a Giga instead of the Mega uh, Zip Troily Designs. Really cool stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I can't remember if I saw said this in the last one, but there's not going to be much racing for a minute because Fort Williams has been cancelled. But I think I mentioned that in the last one. Um, in event news, though, we did see that um, we had Highline Mountain Bike Festival go across in Australia. Uh, a bit of a freestyle event, slope style event, one of the only ones in Australia, I believe, other than perhaps a couple kicking around. But a purpose-built slope-style course in Australia is rarer than hen's teeth at a KFC. Um, they have actually used this as an inaugural kind of kickoff to the free ride mountain bike series that we've now got in Australia so people can get fires points, get points towards going to the bigger off international competitions. I believe this is the first time this has ever been possible in Australia. Um, to see guys like uh, Ry Carolyn, um, Mike Ross and other dudes just sending it, it's gonna be sick. So um, yeah, pretty keen to see more of freestyle stuff, slope style stuff in Australia, as long as there's cool features and not just more boner logs and wow tails and the same stuff we've seen for the last 20 years. Uh, again, jumping around a bit this episode, um, bike news again, there's a new track session. It looks like a GT, nothing crazy. Only comes in alloy because the riders prefer it. Um, I'm riding carbon spectral at the moment, but I actually wish I went alloy. Uh, I do prefer an alloy ride, so I get where they're coming from. It's got that high idler pivot on it. Um, it's a nice little blue color and Reese Wilk Reese Wilson, not Reese Wallace, and Cade Edwards are absolutely shredding on this thing. So I believe this is going to be up there at the top step a lot this year. As the most winningest bike, um, it is not going to be surprised to see it up on that top set, actually. The session is by far the most winningest bike ever to be made. Omri Pyrion has been seen uh, with a common cell wrapped in what looks to be his bed sheets. Um, they're obviously hiding some sort of new suspension platform or they're just being French and there's absolutely nothing different. Um, doesn't look like they're verging away from the high pivot single pivot design, um, high the single pivot design the suspension kinematics and stuff are probably going to be the same, but it does actually appear to be a link in the rear. Um, so it could possibly be a horse link. Um, who knows? It seems like it's either high, either single pivot or 
horsling. Like that's pretty much what we're stuck with these days. There's nothing crazy really happening um, other than that pole. But again, don't want to be riding that pole. Excited to see what happens. Excited to see what Williams Bracing Products uh, has involved with mulleting these guys in the future. They have done a few things. I've seen a few companies uh, starting to mimic what he's doing with common sales. So yeah, they're definitely customizable, which is cool. Um, in a bit of media news, uh, Chris Kyle um, released this edit, uh, mouth-watering mountain bike creativity. Chris Kyle out of season. Uh, good title there, Red Bull. Um, it's actually a really cool video where he brings his BMX skills and his creativity mountain biking. Remember how I was saying about that boring stuff that's kind of in slope style now, where it's drop in, double, double, boner log, whale tail, big drop, finish. It's pretty simple stuff. He has curved wall rides that are 290 degrees around. He does a foot plant backflip on a tree. Um, pretty amazing stuff. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. It is epic. Now, lastly, for this episode, we saw that real mountain bike was brought into the X Games. Uh, first time in a long time that mountain biking has been in the X Games. Had a bit of a checkered past in the past. Nailed it. Um, we saw Brandon Semenuk take the win. Of course, he's going to take the win. Best filmography. Barely looks like he's trying anything. You don't even notice that there's three world firsts in that. It, I mean, they're sketchy world first, but whatever. Um, he absolutely crushed it. Now, everyone was like, Brad got robbed, Brad got robbed, Brad got robbed, because uh, he came in second, Braga um, But it turns out that in the People's Choice Award, he came first, winning an extra five grand. Uh, his edit is off the hook. Uh, what makes it even crazier is the building conditions and what he had to go through to make that course. Being from oh, Eastern Europe, Northern Europe, um, Days were short, had long nights, and a lot of building was done in the snow at night. They had no idea what it was going to look like until the morning. There was a rain. It was It's hectic. The filming conditions are next level. Some of the features he didn't even know were that high until the next day after they'd built them. Um, it was pretty interesting. Uh, Hook It did a really cool product podcast with them. Um, and to make it even crazy, he was backflipping, doing really technical tricks, hitting big hits on a GT. So I want to know how many frames he went through. But uh, anyway, enough shit about them. It's a sick edit. And Cam Zink coming in third is uh, epic as well. He had that Utah edit in there. The filming in all three was amazing. The fact that Danny McCaskill didn't podium in a video contest shows the quality of this competition um it is epic what they've done is really cool uh that hopefully next year they're going to do more and i'd be really keen to see some riders bring more kind of cool snowboardish skateboarderish i don't know streetish kind of features to the the video contest really go creative and do something really cool Braga went real creative but still in the forest it was it was cool um but there was nothing really that creative in there. So, yeah, even even McCaskill wasn't that creative. Uh, best trick out of all of them, though, was Vero Sandler's nothing crank flip. I don't know why, but that thing just blew me away. Yeah, I think that's about it for the news. Um, on my end, we had uh, Josh Button on the podcast. Uh, Char, like I've been a hero, like a fan of his for a long time now. He's absolutely shredding and by far one of the nicest people in the world. So is his dad. His dad would chew the ear off of a, a mole. Um, we also had Nick all kind of good photo on. Uh, Nick is a, a good friend of mine now, I guess. He hails from Canberra, loves country music, but a sick photographer and probably one of the most underrated photographers in Australia. I'm calling it right now. Um, he's done some extra excellent work and he's probably the only full-time photographer in the mountain bike scene so yeah uh really excited with those 
going to record a podcast tonight and we've got another one coming up this week, as you would have seen with Shana Hearn about training. So can't wait to chat to her. One of my most favorite people in the world. Um, She's a big supporter of the podcast and what we do here. Thanks so much for letting me ramble on for so so long. Um, Few things are happening in the podcast world. Few things are happening in my personal world. So um, podcast might become a little bit more sporadic. uh, And lastly, but not least, I'd like to say thank you to everyone that donated to uh, help my dog Maxi get out of the hospital. Um, Max had a condition where his kidney or his body was basically eating the platelets in his blood. He could have bled out if a mosquito bit him. He could have bled out if we patted him too hard. He was he was in a super bad condition. Thankfully, it wasn't cancer. He went into liver failure, all these things, and our medical bills went up quicker than if I was in America with a broken wrist. Um, personally, we were in a bit of financial trouble beforehand. Uh, somehow, this all happened perfectly at the right time for us to be completely broke and have no way of getting Max through the medical treatment that he needed. Thankfully, part, my partner's work and my mum helped out in a big way. And everyone that donated to the through the podcast personally, I'd just like to say a massive thank you and so would Maxie. So, yeah, thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, until next month.